Hello fellow SREs, welcome back to SRE with Ben. Today we are going to learn about how to install a machine agent service on a Linux system. Let's get started. I will be using the Amazon Linux AMI for this demonstration. So the first thing we need to install the agent is the zip binaries. So let's go and download it. Since I already showed you how to download it from the controller, this time I'm going to use my second way to download it from appdynamicsaccounts.com. So head into accounts.appdynamics.com and click on downloads. Here you can select what you would like to download. So I have selected machine agent, latest version for which system. And uh, then I can go ahead and download the version of zip I would like. So I'll be going with the machine agent bundle 64 bit zip Linux zip. So instead of clicking on download, let me get the curl command since I'll be downloading it from directly from my EC2 instance. So let me copy this and uh, log into my EC2 instance and end. So this command has downloaded the zip folder. So when I do an LL, I can see the zip bundle has been downloaded. I'm going to extract this folder into a meaningful folder for convenience. So let me name that folder machine agent. I can see now my zip as extracted and when I cd into the machine agent folder I can see the relevant binaries are extracted. The first step to configure a machine agent would be to configure the required properties inside your controller info.xml. So let's go ahead and do that. For that first navigate into the con folder cd con and edit the controller info.xml. Now you can see, since I have downloaded this binary from the AppDynamics account site, I do not have the controller details here. I will have to manually fill in the controller and the account details. So let me go ahead and do that. For that, press I to go into insert mode and enter the details. I have entered my controller host and port settings. And let me enable SSL equal to true, since we'll be using HTTPS for connecting to the AppDynamics controller. Let our PlayStation be false. This unique host ID is an ID that you can give, give this machine agent so that when you see this in the AppD controller, it will be as per the name you have given, but I will not be changing that. Let me give the account access key and account name. I have entered the account access key and account name. Since I do not have server visibility license, I will keep this enabled property to false. If you have the server visibility license, you can keep this to true so that the metrics can be seen from the app dynamics servers tab. That's it. We are done with the controller info configurations. So let's go ahead and save it. Click on escape colon WQ for write and quit. Let's verify if the changes are reflected. I can see the changes are reflecting now. For the next step, let us go ahead and test whether this is working fine. So let me first go to the machine agent folder. And let me run the test command. The command would be jre pen java hyphen jar machine agent dot jar. Since we'll be using the Java bundled with our machine agent binaries, you can take a call on which version of Java to use if you already have Java installed on your Linux machine. I can see now the app dynamics machine agent has started successfully. Let me go verify in the controller if the agent is reporting. I can see that the agent has started reporting to the controller. This is my EC2 instance and you can see it just started. Now let us stop this testing and go ahead and install the service. First let me stop this, Control C. The first step we would have to perform to install the agent is, we will have to create a directory under the OPT folder and place these binaries there so that when we install the machine agent service, the service can read the files from this OPT directory and uh, run. So first let's go ahead and do that. Let me go into OPT folder. Now you can see uh, there are no folders under OPT for the machine agent. So first I'm going to make a directory called AppDynamics. You can see that the AppDynamics folder has been created. I'm going to navigate inside that folder. Now that the AppDynamics folder has been created, let's go to the next step. Let's copy the binaries inside this folder. So let me go back to my user directory where I have unzipped the machine agent folder. So let me copy this machine agent to my OPT app dynamics. The copy command has run successfully. So let me go inside my OPT folder and verify it. OPT 
Connect Dynamics. Let's I can see now the machine agent bundle has been copied successfully un under the OPT folder. So the next step would be to configure our dot service file to install the agent. So let's go ahead and do that. For that first, we will have to copy the dot service file from the machine agent etc folder to our Linux etc folder. So let me go ahead and do that. I'm going to navigate inside the etc folder of my machine agent bundle. I can see that an app dynamics machine agent dot service is already existing. I'm going to copy this file to my Linux etc folder. CP app dynamics slash etc. Since even the etc folder is a system folder, I need to use the sudo command to do a copy. The copy is done successfully. Let me go and verify it. I can now see the app dynamics machine agent dot service has been copied successfully to my etc folder. So let me go ahead and edit this file. We will be running this file to install the service. So we have to make some path changes and user changes to this file. So let me go ahead and do that. Yeah, app dynamics service. Go into insert mode. The first argument that you would have to verify is if this machine agent home directory is correct. If you remember, we had copied our machine agent binaries under OPT app dynamics folder. So this path is as expected. So we don't have to make any changes. In your case, if you have a different path, please make sure to change this path. Then the Java path, we are going to be using the Java bundled under our machine agent under JRE. So the path remains the same under OPT app dynamics machine agent slash JRE. In your case, if you are using a different version of Java or a system installed Java, kindly change this path to that location. Next thing we would have to change is the username under which this service will be running. In an enterprise scenario, you would generally have a specific user created with read write permissions to the machine agent folder to run the service. But since in my case, I do not have a specific user created, I'm going to change this to root and change this to root. If you have a specific user created only to run this service with relevant permissions, please do change this to that username. We are done with the required changes. All we have to do is run this file now. So let me go ahead and save this. I can see that the changes are reflecting correctly. Now to run the service, first thing we have to ensure is that the relevant permissions are given to this appdynamics.service file and relevant permissions are given to our OPT appdynamics machine agent folder. Since I'm going to be using the root for running the service, I'm going to give root all the accesses, read, write and execute. So let me do that, chmod 777 for giving all three access, app dynamics service. I will have to use the sudo command since this is the system etc folder. I can see that root has execute and write permission to this file. Now let me go ahead and give the same permissions for my machine agent folder as well under the OPT. I've done mix folder. So let me do that, chmod. I can see that relevant permissions are given now. Let me clear the screen. To install the agent, we will be using the systemctl command. Let me run this with a sudo command, sudo systemctl. The first step would be to enable the service using systemctl command. So go ahead and run systemctl enable app dynamics machine agent dot service. This is the service file. You can see that the service is enabled successfully. Now I'm going to go ahead and start the service. For that, you would have to run a command systemctl start service name. I did not get any error messages. This means that the systemctl command has worked and the service has started successfully. To check whether the service is running, you can run a systemctl status command. You can see that 
my service has started and is active and running. This means that the agent installation was successful and there are no errors. I can verify this through my controller to see if the agent is reporting. I can see that the agent is reporting and a new entry is reflecting under my servers tab. If you have an enterprise license, you would be able to view these metrics, CPU, disk usage, memory and other metrics. Since I do not have serviceability license, I cannot view those metrics. But this is how you install the service. You can also verify if the service is running correctly by checking the logs. So let me show you how to do that. Go inside OPT App Dynamics folder inside the machine agent bundle. And you would see now a new folder called logs has been created. You can and I can see that machine agent.log has been generated. So let me open that log file. Let me tail off into that log file to verify if everything is working. I can see that the logs are generating correctly and um, it says the server data collector has started successfully and sending data to the controller. So this is how you can install a machine agent service in your Linux system. This same process applies for all versions of Linux system. The only change would be the zip folder that you're downloading from your AppDynamics account downloads. Make sure is compatible with the version of Linux that you are using. Most common issues that we face during installation of machine agent in a Linux system is permissions. Make sure that relevant permissions are given to the user who's running this service. It is always suggested to create a custom user and give him relevant permissions to the dot .service file and the machine agent folder instead of using the root user. Another issue that is commonly faced is access to the controller from the Linux machine. So always test the connection between your server and the AppDynamics controller. If the connection is not working, either whitelist the AppDynamics controller URL in your server, or you can always use a proxy. You can make use of the VM options file for configuring the proxy so that your service is able to connect to the AppDynamics controller. We are done with today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. Happy learning.